Those who are able, please rise for the reading of the Christmas Gospel according to Matthew. <coughs> now the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All of this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son, and he named him Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Well, as it says in our reading from First Romans, grace and peace to you through God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Names. Names. Everyone who is someone has a name. A name is a powerful thing. Your name becomes associated with your identity, your reputation, and your story. Do you know the origin of your name? Well, my first name is Rachel. It is a name of Hebrew origin, meaning you, or <laughs> little lamb. It's also associated with purity. It's a biblical name from the Old Testament. In the Bible, Rachel was the wife of Jacob and the mother of Joseph and Benjamin. I was named Rachel as my mom and dad both each had had a favorite auntie named Rachel. Names are important. Why is it important to use people's names? Well, according to Dale Carnegie, a person's name is to that person the sweetest, most important sound in any language. The sound of your name being used typically cuts through all the other noise that might be going on around you. Since birth, you have been conditioned to respond to the sound of your name. It is important to use someone's name when interacting with them. It is, after all, their most significant connection to their identity. And it is the easiest way to get someone's attention. By using someone's name while speaking to them, you recognize their importance. Well, in biblical times, names were more intentional, often saying something about the person's character or their situation. For example, King David's name, David, means beloved, and he was known as a man after God's own heart. Throughout the Bible, God changes the names of people when they're given new identities and new missions. Here we have the example of Abram and Sari. Their names were changed when God made a covenant concerning their future. In Genesis, God said to Abram, you will be the father of many nations. No longer will you be called Abram. Your name will be Abraham. For I have made you a father of many nations. I will make you fruitful. 
I will make nations of you, and kings will come from you. In that same chapter, God also said to Abraham, as for, your, as for Sari, your wife, you are no longer to call her Sari. Her name will be Sarah. I will bless her and will surely give you a son by her. I will bless her so that she will be the mother of nations. Kings of people will come from her. In both cases, God chose to refine their names. Abram means exalted father. On his journey, he played a fatherly kind of role for immediate family, such as his nephew, Lot. As Abraham, or father of many nations, he seeks to fulfill his role as protector of God's larger family. Sarai, whose name means princess, becomes Sarah, my princess, and grows into a woman who trusts God's promises. Now, Jacob, you remember him? His name is changed when he wrestled with an angel. He is renamed Israel, which means God preserves. And then the disciple Peter, what was his original name? Simon, yes. Imagine going from being one of the many fishermen on the Sea of Galilee to a pillar of Christ's church. That is the life change that Peter experienced. His name change came from Jesus himself. Simon means he has heard or to listen. Probably a good description for someone who spent most of their time out at sea. But everything changed the day his brother Andrew brought him to meet Jesus. We read in John 1, Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You will be called Cephas, which, when translated, is Peter. Peter means rock. Peter didn't have any idea at the moment what an amazing role God had in mind for him. But he knew enough to obey Jesus' call to join him. And later in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul, what was his first name? Saul. So God uses names to show change, to show new mission and new hope. Now, I've had several names. Some of them I can't repeat here. <laughs> My Girl Scout camp name, though, was Radical. <laughs> when I worked in the prison, the inmates called me Ms. Dale. And a friend here gave me the name of Blessinator. And I liked that one so much, I put it on my license plate. <laughs> here, I've been called Pastor Rachel. And you know, Rachel is good enough, so anytime, you can call me just by my first name. But in the beginning, it was more to remind me that I was pastor than you. <laughs> Each name has had a different role, but my identity remains the same. Names are important. The disciple and gospel writer Matthew thought so too. Matthew begins the story of Jesus' arrival with names tracing Jesus' ancestry all the way back to Abraham. Matthew was writing primarily to a Jewish audience, and all those names listed had stories associated with them and also provided evidence that Jesus was a descendant of both Abraham and King David, as the prophets had foretold. Then Matthew focuses on how Jesus got his name. Jesus' earthly father, Joseph, is visited in a dream after he has decided to dismiss Mary as his betrothed because it appears that she had been unfaithful. Matthew writes, But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife 
because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. The name Jesus, or Yeshua, is derived from Hebrew roots, meaning the Lord is salvation. The scriptures couple God's name and salvation to communicate that the Lord alone saves God's people. <clears throat> Jesus is not the only name mentioned in this passage. It continues in Matthew. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Matthew is pointing back to the book of Isaiah in the Hebrew Bible. Matthew's quoting Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14, and we read this as part of our readings this morning. And it was written between 700 and 800 years before the birth of Jesus. Matthew is showing Jesus as fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecies. In these first chapters, Matthew is making clear Jesus' name and identity. Jesus is the one the prophets foretold. Jesus is in the lineage of King David, and he will save God's people from their sin. Jesus is God with us, Emmanuel. This is the message of all of Matthew's gospel. Matthew lays it all out up front. The world need not wait for the Messiah, the Savior, any longer. Jesus is the promised one. It is in his lineage, names, and identity. What about your name? What names have you gone by? There is one name that all the baptized go by. What is that? Child of God. By Christian baptism, you can never be separated from the name and identity of child of God. The child that comes at Christmas is a gift of grace that makes you and me and all the baptized children of God. The child in the manger is God's love with skin on. Love that will live and die and rise again to save God's people. Jesus is named Savior, for he does as his name means. He will save his people from their sins. Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. At the end of Matthew's Gospel, at his ascension, Jesus promises to be with us even to the end of the age. So what child is this? Let there be no mistake. The little vulnerable child lying in the manger has the greatest name of all, Savior. Jesus is the Messiah, the Christ. Jesus Christ, our Lord, is the one, as Paul wrote in the opening of his letter to the Romans, through whom we have received grace for the sake of his name. Jesus is the final word of God regarding our sin and brokenness. Jesus is the grace of God embodied so that we may know how much God loves us and how far God will go to save us. This is the mystery of Christmas. This love is not earned or deserved or dependent on wealth, education, or status. This love is for you. Child of God, receive again the holy child of Bethlehem, Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. Amen.